Welcome. I'm Rogers Anderson. As we travel around the county, we've got a special show in addition today. We want to spend some time with Ken Marshall, who works here in the administrative complex uh, with so many of our veterans. Many of you know him. Thanks for being with us. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate it. Today's story, uh, the, the vast majority of the, the conversation we want to have today is is about the Memorial Day event that comes around one time a year that you spend a lot of time and energy. It's the 27th. The 27th of this month. Of uh, May. May. And uh, as always, it will be held at the Five Points mm -hmm. uh, down in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, the show will begin at 10. We recommend right, people. Right, 10 o'clock. Uh, probably right. ought to get there around 9.30 and bring your own lawn chairs. We have seating available. We never have enough. We never have enough. And um, it, it's, the program is not long. It'll run no more than 45 minutes at most. But still, um, there's plenty of room to set up a chair. And I know a lot of people like to, uh, because we do have a problem with the heat on Memorial Day. It is a hot day most of the years. Uh, and a lot of people like to go around behind the stage and sit in the shade. And, and we do have speakers back there so they can hear. Um, but you'll need to bring your own chair to do that. And, Ken, before we spend a great deal of time about the events of that day, which every day, uh, every year that we do this event, it continues to grow. Uh, it continues to flourish. It continues to be one of those special times. I wish we didn't have to do it. Um, I don't mean that in the way that that sounds, but uh, so long as we've had militaries, we've had uh, uh, deaths, and we've had um, the need to have these facilities. But wouldn't it be great if we'd ever lost any uh, people uh, in our conflicts? But the reality uh, we have. Well, I'm, I'm happy to report that we are adding no new names from any of the recent con the current conflicts to our killed in action uh, section of the park. This year we, we have no, no new names to add, and that is just terrific, well, I let's, think. Uh, let's talk a little bit about not so much the events that day, mm -hmm. but you make a, an excellent comment, and we have... Um, most people would call them bricks, but they're pavers, pavers. that uh, have individuals' names on them. Kind of talk that process through. It's a little late to pull in and be involved or have a paver place for 2013, but it's not too late for the future years. No, no. Uh, in fact, uh, you can purchase a paver for someone or for yourself while you're still alive. And in those cases, we issue a certificate that can be redeemed upon uh, passing of the person whose name it uh, was purchased. And then the following Memorial Day, we will install a paver for that person. Uh, and we have two different sections of pavers at Five Points. Uh, we have the section for those Williamson County residents who were killed in action in, in all the wars uh, dating back to the, uh, I think the War of 1812, is, is the earliest one we have. Uh, well, the Civil War. We have all the, the Williamson County Civil War um, personnel, people who served in the Civil War on both sides. Uh, we, have, we have papers for them. But we have all the Williamson County residents who were killed in action uh, up through the current conflicts. And the county provides and installs those papers uh, at no charge to anybody. Uh, that's what I was talking about a second ago when I said we have no new ones for this year. We, um, as far as we know, uh, no Williamson County resident was killed in action during the past year. Um, and then we have the, the other section of pavers, our purchased pavers, the ones that you can purchase for a loved one, a friend, or yourself. Um, uh, and these, are, these represent people who served in the military who have some connection with Williamson County. They don't have to be a resident or live in Williamson County. If, uh, if you have a, um, if you live here and you have a father who lives in Florida, you can purchase a paver uh, for that person and we will install it. Uh, they're $65 um, and like I said, if, if, if you're deceased, if the person is deceased, uh, we will purchase a paver, we will install it the next <coughs> Memorial Day after you make the purchase. Uh, 
Um, if the person is still alive, we will issue the certificate and, and it can be redeemed at a, la at a later date. And those are, we're installing several new ones this year for, that people have purchased during the past year. Um, and I think it's a terrific uh, way to remember uh, a loved one, a friend, a relative. Before we get off on that, you might want to give the folks your phone number. Uh, and, and for people that don't know, Ken handles so many of our issues that deal with our veterans, but you're only here on a part-time basis. I'm, I'm here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 8 to 12. I dread you asking for my phone number because I don't call myself very often, but it is 790-5623. Um, we'll confirm that before we put it please on the do. <laughs> TV screen here. As many of you know, the, this show is uh, it's not live, but it is uh, taped. And we can't yes, you might want to check the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, the events that we will have that day, there are certainly people that will be there uh, helping serve some water, and, and we'll have some tents set up. But we do encourage everyone that has um, um, a loved one. It's a great time to bring some grandchildren. I'm trying to uh, arrange some time for my grandchildren to be with me on that particular day. Uh, for our young people to see um, an event that is very solemn, but quite ceremonial in the way that, that it is handled. And you might just touch on from the opening uh, dialogue uh, that begins around 10 o'clock, what really happens and so many people involved. Well, there are for such a short program. Um, it's conducted, the program is conducted along the lines of a military funeral, to be honest. Uh, we follow pretty much the same, uh, we do the same things that are done for a military funeral. We don't necessarily do them in the same order. Um, we spread them out a little bit. Uh, uh, but all the traditional uh, folding and presentation of the flag, the placing of the wreath, the flowers, the um, uh, what's commonly, erroneously called a 21-gun salute. It's not really, but, but a firing uh, detail. Uh, the playing of taps, along with some other bugle calls during the program, and, and uh, the Williamson County Band provides patriotic music. Um, it, it's, a, it's a really uplifting, uh, I think, program. And I'd like to point out that this year we will have uh, uh, a special guest the Commissioner of the Tennessee Department of Veterans Affairs, a member of the Governor's Cabinet, is going to be our special guest this year. Uh, she'll be placing the wreath and, and offering some words during, during the ceremony. So I, I think it's going to be a, a, a really uplifting ceremony. And I'm, I agree with you. I wish, I want to see more young people. And I would encourage uh, uh, the folks out there that are our age, and and older um, to bring to bring their 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 children and grandchildren out and and let them see what uh, appreciate and understand the sacrifices that people have made in the past and are making today. I think it is important to note that Memorial Day is a time, and most people that are uh, you made the comment our age and older. Um, understand that the Memorial Day is to acknowledge those men and women that have given the ultimate sacrifice um, for this country. Yes. Um, if you go back to the earlier wars uh, or for the internal operations such as the Civil War, those, those sacrifices were made. This is entirely different than the Veterans Day. Um, that we host later in the year. Uh, it, it is. It's two different events and people get those mixed up and oftentimes it's, it's not intentional, they just don't think of it in the same right. manner. The, 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 two, the two holidays, Veterans Day and Memorial Day, are at their core about as different as night and day. Uh, Veterans Day is, is a day that we, which comes in November, that is a day that we recognize everybody who served in the military and people who are serving today. It's a day of thank you, saying thank you to those people. It's a day of celebration of flags and parades and, and, um, uh, and I like to say 
free dinners at, at multiple restaurants around town. It, it's it's a, a disc, extra discounts at Lowe's and Home Depot, and it, it's a it's a day of celebration. Uh, it can be a loud day, which is good. But slap people on the back and say thank you. Um, Memorial Day, by contrast, is a very solemn, somber day, uh, as should be evidenced by the word memorial. Uh, we're recognizing those who are deceased, particularly those who, like you said, uh, fell on the field of battle. And as a result, it, it's not quite as, as loud and celebratory. It's much, it's celebratory, but in a, in a much more solemn manner. We'll have several hundred people that will be there. We will have some bleachers set up, as we've indicated. We encourage people to bring their own chairs. They're a little softer. They can move them around. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, area in which to maneuver, but there's enough area to crawl under a few trees or catch the, mm -hmm. the shade of, a, of the uh, archives and museum building that we have down there. But um, again, it's a show, some, it's not a show, but it's a, it's a period of time for about 45, 50 minutes that uh, the, the, the activities will go on. And uh, if one has never seen or uh, observed, uh, it is quite moving. Yes, it is. Um, uh, you, there, there are tears shed that day, and it, it, because it is such a moving and emotional uh, uh, experience. Uh, like some, some people tell me, uh, it's hard to listen to uh, someone playing Amazing Grace on the bagpipes and not, not feel moved and there will be somebody playing Amazing Grace on the bagpipes that morning. Uh, it, it's just a, uh, it's hard to, to describe. Uh, I would only say come and be a part of it and, and then you'll understand. Uh, well, in years gone past, we've kind of learned from um, some of our experiences. We're gonna to try to block off the traffic the best we can. Uh, there are certain limitations on blocking right. that traffic mm -hmm. off. Um, You'd be surprised, uh, I know over the last several years, just how many trucks and vehicles just pull off to the side mm -hmm. and uh, show uh, that reverence uh, by leaving their car literally almost in the center of the road. So um, real quick, if there's somebody in the front of the line that blocks traffic, uh, it pretty well stops the rest of the traffic. But law enforcement will be there trying to minimize that the best they can. Uh, it's a beautiful setting. Uh, we hope we have uh, good weather. Uh, it'll be a little warm, chances are, maybe this year, because we've had some awful cool <coughs> spring days. Maybe it'll be just a perfect setting of a mild morning and, uh, and then uh, wonderful view uh, as you look down West Main into Franklin. Uh, it's, it's uh, I think, one of the more attractive Memorial Day services, and I have been to several of them in my life over the years, but uh, it, it, it doesn't have the national uh, prominence of um, maybe Ar uh, uh, Arlington or or even into Nashville, but uh, there'll be a lot of people there. Ken. Well, I I can tell you that you know we receive a, a lot of support every year from the Tennessee National Guard uh, in putting this on as far as providing personnel, and year in and year out, the soldiers from the National Guard who come here to participate in this program tell me that it's one of, if not the best program that they have participated in in the entire state. And that includes the governor's program. Uh, well, it's a setting, and I also think it's just, uh, it's, 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 even though it's large in volume of number of people being there, it feels smaller, it feels real intimate, it feels like you're speaking to me, uh, that you can actually have uh, that connection, you're not, separated with a large barrier, I guess, from the podium uh, to the audience, uh, uh, maybe five feet? <laughs> not far. Uh, I, and I think a lot of that is due to the five points location, yes. the way it's, uh, uh, it's pretty much hemmed in, but it's a park-like setting in the middle of town. It's just, it's a beautiful setting, and, and it's a beautiful little park. I should note that those that um, can, can um, make the trip, that we will have the uh, archives and museum um, building open that day. 
Uh, there's uh, certainly a large military section in our building for that, along with many, many other aspects of the museum and the archives. But that particular day is a holiday, and so we're making arrangements for that building to be open uh, so that people can, can uh, go in and observe some of the military uh, things that we've got in there or even the military room. Well, I think personally it, it, it would be worth a trip down even if you weren't coming for the Memorial Day program, just to go into the archives and see what's that. that I don't think a lot of people realize what's there. Maybe not on that day, because we'll shut that yes. up about 12 o'clock, because right. it is a holiday yeah. and we're making special arrangements, because we've got employees that, that uh, like to be off like everyone else, mm -hmm. but uh, we're making special arrangements and we'll give them some other time off. Kim, before we lose track of all of our time here, and, and our show was really focused and centered around encouraging people to come out on uh, Memorial Day that Monday. Uh, starts at 10, be there around 9.30ish, yeah. and um, claim your spot, and, uh, bring your uh, bottle of water, or there'll be some provided. But, but I do want to talk a little bit about the activities that you do on a uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday here at the administrative complex on West Main. And the many men and women uh, that come through the doors uh, or and call, make an appointment to see you, or oftentimes just drop in, and the services you provide for those veterans, if you wouldn't mind talking about. And the spouses. And the spou and sur surviving spouses. Correct. Yes. Uh, well, my, the primary thing that I do uh, in my regular job when we're not uh, dealing with Memorial Day is to assist veterans and surviving spouses of veterans with applying for determining eligibility for VA benefits. And there are VA benefits out there that a lot of people <coughs> simply are not aware of or, or realize that they're eligible for or potentially eligible for. Um, and that's part of the of what I'm, I'm trying to do is get the word out. For example, uh, something we're still seeing a lot of right now. Uh, in 2009, the VA added some disabilities to the Agent Orange Presumptive Act. Uh, by that, uh, anybody who served in Vietnam, on the ground in Vietnam, is presumed to have been exposed to Agent Orange. And if they get any of these disabilities on this list, it's automatically service-connected, and they get service-connected disability benefits. Uh, a lot of our Vietnam veterans, and, and we have a lot of them, don't realize that, and I'm still seeing people coming in all the time. Um, the, for example, the newest disabilities added were ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease, the thing that, that causes us to have, to have bypass surgery. Uh, fairly common in, in the Vietnam veteran age group. And a lot of these veterans have had bypass surgery, they have heart disease, and they have no idea that all they have to do is file a claim with VA to be compensated for that because it's presumed to have been due to their exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam. Uh, another new disability that was added is Parkinson's disease, a disease that's not uncommon to that age group. and any Vietnam veteran, and I say any Vietnam veteran, any veteran who served on the ground in Vietnam. If you were in Thailand, you may have eligibility. It depends on your particular circumstances. Or if you were off the, on a ship offshore, unless you actually went inland, uh, you would not be eligible. But those who served on the ground, um, who developed Parkinson's disease, that's automatic. All you have to do is file the claim. And we're still uncovering Vietnam veterans who suffer from these disabilities who simply don't know that. And um, that's why I appreciate the opportunity to, to maybe get a little outreach here and, and get the word out. Uh, some other common disabilities that we're still filing claims for every day are type 2 diabetes, an extremely common ailment among the Vietnam veteran age group. That's automatic service connection if you served in Vietnam. Uh, lung cancer is another one. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a laundry list of, of cancers and, and leukemias that if you have those conditions and served in Vietnam, all you have to do is file the application. And, and that's what I do, is help you with the paperwork 
to, to get that in, determine if you're eligible, and then we get the paperwork together and into VA. And in some cases, it can mean a substantial amount of money. Well, I, I mean, I'm amazed at how that message, I know every time that you're on the TV show, which is once or at least once a year, um, and how much effort it, that, 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 that is made, that there are lots and lots of individuals out there that are still are not aware, not just, you know, you're speaking predominantly of the Vietnam era, mm -hmm. but there are other wars, uh, although our, our World War II veterans are um, slowly um, dying, um, that's been a, it's been 60, in some mm -hmm. cases, plus years um, that, that our men and women have served. I recently saw on the news uh, there was some special effort to get some men together and they were approaching in the mid 80s and 90 years of age and and they were trying to get these men together because quite a few of them were, were uh, dying off and they didn't know that they could have the next five-year mm -hmm. reunion. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing that even here in the, in, the, uh, in the Williamson County area that we'll have quite a few World War II veterans at our Memorial Day event, but they're, they're getting fewer and fewer. Well, and that, that brings up another program that VA has that is a large part of the business that I do. Uh, and that is primarily with World War II or Korean War veterans. They have a non-service connected disability pension program. It's, it's a need-based program. Uh, you have to meet certain net worth and income requirements. Uh, but there are ways to uh, reduce the, the family's countable income. Uh, by paying with medical expenses. And these are things that we just have to talk about on an individual basis, but hardly a day goes by that I don't get a, a phone call from usually a, an adult child, someone closer to my age, you know, uh, will say, I've heard there might be something about my father was in World War II or my uh, mother was married, you know, my, her husband who's deceased was a veteran of World War II. Is there any Benefit, are there any benefits that available from VA? And in a surprising number of those cases, there are benefits available. They're up to, for a surviving spouse, up to $1,100 a month is potentially available, and up to $2,000 a month for a, for a veteran, depending on the circumstances. But we just have to talk about each individual case to see if they're eligible and where they would fall. But but. You know, that is a huge part of my business right and now. I, and I think uh, in the four or five minutes that we've got left on the show that we need to also touch on that fact that uh, oftentimes the, um, you are dealing with uh, the spouses mm -hmm. uh, in, in some of those activities and there's, we would encourage those spouses of, of, of uh, military men um, uh, to please make contact with you. Just give me a call. We can talk. We can usually, with a few questions on the phone, we can usually determine uh, if there's any real probability of entitlement. And, and then if there is, then we can pursue it further. But, but at least call and ask and let's talk about it. You know, when you sit back and you look at it, I haven't seen uh, a chart. I have seen a chart, but I don't remember the numbers of just how many veterans they are here in Williamson County. You may know that off the top no, of your head. No, we, we really don't have a database on that. Um, but we've got a ton of them in, in Tennessee. Yes. And uh, even though you're housed and you're... Um, part-time salary, and I should say that Ken is part-time employee who is funded 100% by local tax dollars. Uh, the feds do not send any money down, and I am so thankful for men like Ken that are willing to take that on, and his, he worked very faithfully, uh, and now he still feels that calling and need to provide those benefits for someone after he is retired. So uh, I hope you continue to do it for a long time. but. Uh, I know it's a passion with you, and I know it's a love of yours. But if even if you know someone in a surrounding counties, you don't discriminate against that individual if they're from Rutherford County or Marshall County or Dixon County. Um, it's, 
the facilities that we've got here seem to encourage a lot more people oftentimes and and and, and you know oftentimes uh, we do see people outside of the ranks or we well I, I will get calls from um, you know obviously if there is a if I think there is a an advantage to them talking to someone local in their local area I will tell them sure. that but I'll often get calls from people on particularly on the Nashville Brentwood on the Nashville side of Brentwood in Davidson County and they'll tell me that <coughs> they would rather drive to Franklin than go into downtown <coughs> Nashville Excuse me. pay eight dollars to park and 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 sure that's perfectly okay um, Ken, in a couple of minutes we've got left, let's, let's kind of backtrack a little bit. Let's highlight what we, uh, the show is really focused on, not just your day-to-day -day operations, which are very important. Each individual coming through these doors here as a veteran or as a spouse, um, we are concerned about them. We're going to deal with them in a very professional manner and try to help them out where we can. Um, but our event today is about encouraging people to come down to the Memorial Day services, and I'll let you kind of touch on that uh, one more time. Well, again, it will be <coughs> Monday, May 27th, Memorial Day, which is a holiday, uh, at Five Points in downtown Franklin. Uh, the program will begin promptly at 10, and uh, as you said, uh, it'd be a good idea to get there at 9.30 uh, or so to stake out your spot, uh, although we will have chairs. Uh, but a lot, a lot of people like to find a spot in the shade, and most of the chairs are not in the shade. But one other aspect of that is, is there's a lot of socializing that goes on that day. A lot of people see people they know they haven't talked to in a while, so come early to meet your friend, run into your old friends, uh, stay late and run into your old friends. And the program will run about 45 minutes. And I can, and it will begin promptly at 10. There will be no delays. Speaker will be an opportunity to meet the commissioner a delightful lady and a very passionate lady about anything involving <coughs> veterans or the military. Uh, she's, I think everyone will be extremely impressed with Commissioner Minnie Bears Grinder. I uh, think it's an interesting name that she's got, Minnie Bears Grinder, and that is her name. She, she is an American Indian. Uh, she's a retired colonel from the Tennessee National Guard. And she's, like I said, she's a, a passionate and delightful lady. I think, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, she may have lost a family member. She did. Her daughter-in-law was a helicopter pilot who died in Iraq uh, several years ago. So she does have that passion. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful lady. Well, our time is out. Got to go. Ken Marshall handles our veterans, does a wonderful job on the different aspects here in Williamson County. Look forward to seeing you on Memorial Day at 10 o'clock at Five Points. Get there early. I'm Rogers Anderson. See you around the county. for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother, her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a CASA volunteer. I am you.